Apparently, sometimes we have more than one way to formulate the recursion function in dynamic programming. So we are going to look at equipment replacement problem again, but now with a different approach. In the equipment replacement problem, remember that what we need to do is determine how long a machine should be utilized before we should trade the machine for a new one. And this is the example that we use to illustrate the equipment replacement problem. You may pause the video if you would like to read the problem carefully. So here's the alternative function to define the recursion. GT is the minimum net cost incurred from time t until time 5. And here's the important thing. Given that a new machine has been purchased at time t. So in this case, uh, for each point of time 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we always assume that we purchase a new machine at time t. Exception at time 5 because this is the end of the problem. So obviously we must not purchase a machine. But for any other time point t, we would like to compute the cost assuming that we purchase a new machine at time t. So the cost is CTX. This is the cost of purchasing a new machine at time T and then operating it until time X. That's why you see the next component here is plus GTX because um, we buy a new machine at time T. We use it from T until X. So the next thing here is gx, the cost from um, x until time 5, given that a new machine has been purchased at time x. And then uh, here what we need to minimize is that among all possible x here, we would like to find the one that gives us the minimum cost. So let's start by defining the ctx. Let's say we start with t equals 0. If t equals 0, the possible x's are 1, 2, and 3. So you have CO1, CO2, and CO3. We do not have CO4 because you can only use a machine for 3 years. So if you purchase a machine at time 0, you can only operate it until time 3 at most. Why? Because one year, two years, three years. So that's why you only have CO3. And then here, because the cost does not depend on what point of time, that's why CO1 equals C12 equals C23 equals C34 equals C45. Because if you notice here, they all mean that we purchase a machine at time t and then we uh, operate it for just one year. And the cost for let's say CO1 um, is purchase the new machine, maintenance during its first year of operation, and then sell the machine. So this is the salvage value from a one year old machine. And then these, um, these are all the costs for using the machine for two years. So you uh, buy a new machine, maintenance, and then sell that machine after two years. And finally, the last row means buy a new machine, maintenance for during first year, second year, second third year, and finally sell the three year old machine. So let's start with G4 because this is the last point of time that is possible for us to buy a new machine. Time 5 is the end of the problem so obviously we will never buy a new machine at the point time 5. That's why G5 equals 0 and then the only possible cost is C45 so G4 equals C45 plus G5 equals 0. So 
G4 equals just C4, 5, which is 260. This already includes buying a new machine, maintenance cost, and sell that one year old machine. And then G3 means that if we buy a new machine at the beginning of time three, then we have two possible options. We may use it for one year, means that we trade it before time or before or at the beginning of time four, or we may also use it for two years. So it means we trade the machine or sell the machine at the beginning of time five. For the first decision, it means we have C34 plus G4 because uh, C34 means that use uh, the machine from year three and then sell it at the beginning of time four. And then at the same time, at the beginning of time four, we must buy a new machine because we always need to have the machine available in our auto repair shop, right? For um, trade at time five means that we have C35 plus G5. And then we have a curly bracket, pick the minimum one, which means that if we purchase, again, the emphasis is on the word if, if we purchase a new machine at time three, the best decision is to trade it at time four. If we purchase a new machine at time two, we have three possible options, trade it at time three, trade it at time four, trade it at time five. Same for G1, we have three possible options, trade it at time two, trade it at time three, or trade it at time four. Um, if you notice here, the stage is not defined explicitly because it's kind of like the state and the stage, they are the same. Because in this formulation, if we are in the stage of time one, the state is also one because it means that suppose we purchase a new machine at time one. So the stage and the state um, is the same such that the stage is not defined explicitly in this recursion. Finally, we have reached G0. So we know that the optimal cost from time zero until the end of the problem equals $1,280. And then to check the policy here, we have two asterisks here. So we may follow either of them. Both of them provides the same optimal cost. Let's say I follow this one here. So from zero, we go to G1 means that um, we use the machine for one year sell it and buy a new one at time one and then again there are two options let's say we go to g2 so buy a new one and use it for one year and sell it again and then at time two we buy a new one and use it until time five and sell it okay so this is the optimal solution for the problem And yet another approach for this problem is that we may represent the problem as a network problem. And then what we are going to do is that we are going to shortest uh, to find the shortest path from time zero to reach time five. This is similar to our example that we've seen before. Joe Kugar wants to go from New York to Los Angeles and try to find the shortest path between those two cities. Here, the idea is um, similar, okay? And then if you see your textbook, the other problems that we have discussed before, like the knapsack problem, inventory problem, they also may be represented as a network problem, and we've tried to find the shortest path. So that's the end for all the things I would like to talk about this week. And next week, we're going uh, to look at in particular to how we are going to formulate the recursion function. 
So the emphasis next week would be on the recursion function. So see you next week and thank you.